Okay, good afternoon guys. Welcome to this live trading clinic. Um, Steve Ruffley. Hopefully you've uh, seen some of my webinars before. What we're going to talk about today is the markets and how we real-time chart. And unlike most of the traders out there, in order to back up my education and, get, and give you that extra credibility, I'm going to try and always put on um, a live trade. So I've got my own account, which I've run through Inter uh, Intertrader. So I'm going to be trading on a normal spread betting platform, just like everybody else. I'm going to prove to you the education that I trade today and uh, that I have done for the last two and a half years makes sense. So we can go through any product you like. It doesn't make any difference. I can chart anything. It's entirely up to you. Again, the more interaction I have from you guys, the better these sessions are going to be. So again, let me know of any products you want to chart, you're struggling with, anything you might find difficult with regards to entry point, your exit point, if you're getting stopped out of trades too early. All these things, all these things we need to look at. And again, by watching me put my own money on and build up the charts as I do, hopefully you get the confidence to be able to trade and uh, have better results. So before I start, I'm trading a live account, so I need to read this warning. Now, spread betting and safety trading both carry a high level of risk or capital, and the results and uh, losses that can exceed your initial deposit. They better be suitable for everyone, so please ensure you fully understand the risks involved. Uh, the information and comments provided herein under no circumstances have been considered as an offer, offer or solicitation to invest. Nothing herein should be construed as investment advice. The information provided is believed to be accurate at the date the information is produced. Again, education only, guys. Content, is web, uh, content of the webinar is personal opinion of the moderator, not intro.com. The content does not contribute financial investment or tax advice. Intro.com is not accept our ability for the content of the during the session. I hate reading them risk disclaimers, but I guess we'll have to do them. Okay, so the webinar is going to cover live charting analysis. As I say, I'm going to go through any product um, that you know that you, you guys want to trade. If not, I'll just go through the majors. I'll try and explain to you how I trade and how I've taught hundreds of people to trade using the right multiple time frame trading style. Okay, it's all about looking at your 15 minute candles with your hourly view based upon higher time frame levels. It's the only way to trade, I'm afraid, and uh, it doesn't matter if you're a scalper, position trader, momentum trader, this is the way you do it. Okay, so I'm currently writing a book, um, it'll be published in the next six months, I guess, and it's all around, the, you know, this subject. Uh, again, it's very hard to bring new things to the table in trading sometimes, and it's very hard when you do as many presentations as I do on Forex Street, FX Street, and all these other mediums, because people are always looking for new information, looking for a new topic, a new edge. Unfortunately, th these things don't exist. All that exists is the markets, the traders, and how people interpret information. These days, everyone's got access to the same information. So it's how you utilize it. It's how you interact with the markets, how you understand what the market's doing, and when you press the button to enter the trade. That, that's all that you can control. You can't control dodgy bankers, you can't control people uh, that maybe manipulate the market, you can't control the government, you can't control the money supply, you can't control anything. All you can control is the way you look at a chart, you assimilate that data, and then your decision to buy or sell based upon it. That's all you can control. You have no more edge than that, and don't kid yourself and think you do, okay, because it doesn't exist. All you have is your ability to understand data and to make a trade decision based upon that. All right, guys. Well, like I said, I'm going to go through the majors. You know, let's let's talk about some charts. Let's talk about what's happening. Obviously, we've got um, some data throughout this afternoon, which I'll be trading, obviously, on Intertrader, so you can come and watch me uh, trade that. Okay, we've seen a bit of a, a sell-off in, in the currency, the euro dollar, uh, today, but the markets are generally moving around. And again, you have to ask yourself first and foremost, why is why why are these things moving at the minute? Is this down to fundamental data? Is this down to uh, an overall change in trends? I mean, again, you see that I, I like to watch Bloomberg. I like to watch Bloomberg because it gives me an idea of what people in the markets are looking for, are searching for. When you hear people like George Soros and Warren Buffett, okay, Warren Buffett's just bought Heinz with some other billionaire in, uh, in Brazil. What does that really mean? What does that really mean to us as traders, as, us, as, as day trading investors? It means nothing, guys. Absolutely nothing. Warren Buffett, he's nothing. All right, okay, he's one of the richest men in the world. He's given all his money away to Bill Gates Foundation. You know, he's not heavily involved in the markets every day. If you read his his books and you read his blogs and you read his how he was, you know, involved in the markets, it's a different world. He's trading in a different world. He's trading in a different set of circumstances. And he's not looking at the markets like we are. It's very easy to sit back and make big sweeping statements like gold's going to go down. You know. 
well, whatever, you know, $300, when you're sat on $63 billion of your own, very easy to be, you know, an armchair investor. You know, we're not interested in people like that anymore. You know, they don't. Oh, they might have a, a, a tiny ripple through to the market, but that, that's people that have no opinions of their own. They have no way of, of of doing their own trading analysis. If you just listen to Warren Buffett and sell gold on the back of that, then you're not a trader at all. You're just a punter. Okay, so that has zero credibility. His comments, you know, him as an investor these days have zero credibility in the markets. So what we have to control and what we have to do is base our own opinions. On what the market's doing, what data we've got, and you know, put that into our own trading decision. We're all going to see the markets differently, and we're all going to look at an opportunity in a slightly different way. And that's what makes up the markets. You know, if we know the market is likely to go down to a level, well, people are happy for that level to to be hit and then buy back at that level and let the market go up. Or people go, well, I know the market's going to go down to that level, so I'll sell. I'll sell down to that level. You know, very, people are very particular about what they call themselves as a trader. You know, people had to say, well, I'm just a footsie swing trader. The fact of the matter is, if you trade intraday and you trade on a spread betting platform, you know, you're not a professional trader. You can't be a professional trader. You know, professional traders, like when well, I in the city, you, you spend thousands on getting the edge. You have thousands on your Bloomberg terminal. You have CQG. You have your eight screens. You have direct market access. You're trading the bid and offer. Okay, as it comes through to the market, that's a professional trader. Okay, you can't be a professional trader without that. You can be a long-term trader. You can be, uh, you know, a self-backed trader. But you can't really be a professional trader for a spread betting platform. It just doesn't work like that. You know, I'm sorry. You know, and again, people out there might say, "Well, I make my living, you know, based upon that." But how much do you really make? Okay. Back in the day, back, you know, the traders I used to you know, mingle with, and what we used to do, we were making 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand pounds a day. You weren't a trader. You were just somebody who was participating in the markets. So I doubt there's many people out there that are, are printing them kind of numbers. So once we've kind of got past all that, and we've got past all the kind of nonsense that people like to talk as traders, let's focus back on what we can control. I'm trading today off a spread betting platform. Okay? I've got a relatively small account. I've got seven, 8,000 quid in it. And I'm trading off MetaTrader charts. Okay? MetaTrader charts are great. Number one, they are free. They cost nothing. Okay, you get good, accurate data, and you can format them in any way you like. So this is the way I choose to format them. This is my overview. So when I would look at the markets and have a quick snapshot of what's going on, I would just flick onto the hourlies, because that's a good, solid time frame to build up uh, an idea of what the market is doing. And then I can zoom into these charts, make them bigger, and, you know, again, go through any time frames I want. So, for instance, okay, let's pick any chart on this screen. Okay, let's look at the dollar versus Japanese yen in the hours. Okay, so what's that chart telling us? Now I've got some automatic lines that are generally um, drawn on based upon certain principles that I've observed in the markets over the last 10 years. So the thick blue line, okay, is going to be your very small time frame peak. Okay, so that's the high on the small time frames. Remember, we're looking at an hourly view now. So in the hourly view, okay, so really, You've got to remember each one of these is an hour trading. So you're looking at quite a lot of information here. Okay? You're looking at a good two weeks worth of trading data. Okay, so what's happened is the market has moved up. Okay, these nice green solid candles. Yeah, it's trying to make some higher highs, and we see, okay, relatively small bodies, yeah, but these nice long wicks saying the market's running out of momentum. Slowly moves down, can't make a higher high. One, two, three, four. Five than the overall high. Okay, finally concedes. We see a little doji here. So the body is quite small, the tail on either side. Then the market sells off. Okay, he tries to recover from this line of support here. And look where it tests again, tests right back to that blue line of overall resistance. Then the market then again, double, double top here enough, near enough, and then the market sells back down. So we, that, that just tells you in a very, very wide snapshot that the market's tried to move higher. It couldn't. It's not aggressively moved down. It's found some, some good support around the middle. And again, if you use basic charting principles like I like to, okay, what do we always say? 80% of the time, a strong directional move will retrace to 50%. Okay, so if you're looking at the chart, forget all the lines, okay? They, they're irrelevant. You just look at what's happened. Okay, well, the market, if you look down here, 15th of February, started not move. Okay, we see one, two, three, four. 
yeah, the fourth one being a very, very strong um, green candle. You know, again, showing a lot of direction. The market then has a little think about it, a bit of profit taking, then continues to move up and, and, and again makes their highs. So that information is gone. But how can we use that information now? Okay, so the market was trading up here back on the 15th of February, and is now trading here today on the 21st. Well, first thing I'd do is to get old friend Fibonacci out. So we can see what the, what, the, what the move has started on this daily area of interest here. So that ties in with a key level of interest, okay, there's been of interest to the market. So that's where the move starts. Yeah, draw a Fibonacci on. That's the high of the move. That's where it stops. So what are the key points in, in, in Fibonacci? Well, it's generally the 50 percent okay so any strong directional up move to some extent will retrace to 50 percent okay so what we see is the market made the high in the next hourly candle it can't get anywhere near that high high or print a higher high so the market then moves down okay so again we're moving in these little waves we don't hit the 23.6 percent okay which would be for me the natural first testing point but we do actually test this level here which is another daily interest of 38.850 so the market then dances along that, finds support, finally breaks through. And again, when it touches that key 23.6%, it doesn't even look back. It looks to break through and aggressively try and get to that 38.2. Remember, all the while, it's looking to retrace to the 50%, which is a long way, but it's looking to do that. Remember, all these are hourly candles. So if you're waiting for that 50% retracement, which, you know, again, finally does happen, but it doesn't happen until the 20th of February. So five days worth of trading before that is hit. But, again, it depends on your trading strategy and it depends how aggressive you want to be. So the fact of the matter is, once you've drawn that Fibonacci in, okay, that can be your stop. Okay, so you draw a line in here, that's your stop. And let's just make this a little clearer. Okay. So that's going to be your stop, that red line. Okay, so that's your stop. So we've, that's the high. So anywhere after that high has been made and we've drawn the Fibonacci, if it breaks above that, then the market is likely to move higher so we don't get short. So what we look for is something else, something else to give us, you know, that, that understanding that the market could go short. Well, I can see already, okay, let's draw a nice little, sorry, that's not the right one. Let's draw a nice little trend line. Okay, so a trend line, we've got a gap here. So the gap here hasn't been closed. Now, we know from the past, markets do not like gaps. At some point, that gap will look to close. Okay, but we've gapped higher. In the next hourly candle, we don't even break the low or fill that gap. Therefore, that's a bullish sentiment. Okay, so that, that means that upward momentum is going to continue. So upward momentum continues. We make the higher high, we draw a Fibonacci, and then really, above that red line, we don't ever look back. So if we're going to draw in a simple trend line, we can draw one here, yeah. yeah, and again, you could even draw one on the upside because it touches, oh, sorry guys, because it touches a couple of points, so make the high, and then again after that, okay, so that, that's not a great um, level of resistance, or, or what, we, what we're looking for is, is a breakout point, okay, so the, the level of support is good enough on its own, okay, we know that the market's not making higher highs, so that really, that trend line's irrelevant, so let's try and keep it simple, what we can see is the trend line has touched 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times, 8 times is showing support along that, so we know the market's failed to make a higher high, okay, so the market's moving down, so it comes to this trend line, okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to look for the market to break below that trend line and start touching key levels, and that's 32.6, 38.2, and 50% retracement. Okay, well, the market then finds support on the 23.6 and moves up. Okay, but again, that high of that, the candle where we actually broke that trend line, becomes resistance. So that thick blue line, which is automatically drawn in, look how many, again, it becomes a nice level of resistance. So remember, when support's broken, it becomes resistance, okay, if, and if it's held, that means the overall trend has reversed and the market is looking to recover. So that big up move that we see here is going to recover, and 80% of the time, eventually, it's going to hit that 50% mark. So the market then finds support on the 23.6, breaks through, comes back, you know, finds a little bit of support on it this time, but then breaks through, moves lower, yeah, eventually tests the 38.2, that becomes then support. Market moves up, breaks lower, then hits the 50%. Okay, so you're going to have to wait 
about 30 candles to get the most of that move. But when you look at your risk reward, if here is your entry point, anywhere around here, or below that blue line, should we say, and your stop is here, okay, above that 100%, so that, that, you know, that's, that's your margin of error, what you're allowed to play with. If you're looking for that 50% to be hit, which you know 80% of the time it will, that's a probable trade, that is your, that, that's the difference. So from there to there, okay, from this distance here, let's get the cursor, that's our stop, yeah, 22 ticks. And what's our profit? Well, our profit's going to be from our entry point anywhere around here, roughly, to the 50%, 73. Okay, so that's a 3 to 1 risk-reward ratio just based upon an hourly chart, and it never goes offside. So, again, guys, you know, that's taking something very, very simple, like an overall trend, okay, that we see on the upside, knowing that the probable outcome is that 80% of the time that's going to retrace to 50%, drawing your simple Fibonacci on, using the 0.0, .0 on that overall high as your stop, you can even put your stop above that. Yeah, giving your trade room to breathe by letting it go underneath this level of support, this trend line, and not breaking back above the horizontal blue line, which is the top of the breakout. Yeah, the market then tests it a couple of times. You know, a bit of indecision, the market still moves up, but you're still not offside, and then bang, eventually the market breaks through. It doesn't even look back from that 23.6 and tries to hit lower. Okay, the market then does retrace a lot of that candle, but again, you're still not... You still haven't broke back into your entry point or you know, where your stop is. So that's your decision. You either take some profit out when you break through that 23.6 or you hold on to it knowing that if it's tested at 23.6, the likelihood is it's going to test at 38.2. And once it's tested at 38.2, 80%, 8 times out of 10, it will always test the 50%. So yeah, you've got to be patient. But I mean, that's, that's a good trade. That, that makes perfect sense when you're looking on the hourly charts. When you've got the hourly charts, you know, you're talking about, you know, 60 minutes worth of trading. You're talking about four 15-minute candle closes. So if you look at the 15-minute chart, okay, then it, it looks even more simple. Okay, so if we go back, let's just zoom out a little bit. If we go back and we see this high, okay, I'm sorry. So you see the high, yeah, the market on the red line at 93, uh, 987, once it's hit that, it never looks back, we make a double top, the market moves down quite aggressively, moves back up, and again, a guarantee of that overall move, that'll be a little mini 50%, so again, market moves from here to here, okay, well, the, 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 those are the 50% there, tying on that daily level we've got in line, 93,772. Okay, so it breaks a little bit above that, up to the 61.8. But again, as soon as it does, it can't hold on to it, and then it's all red after that. Yeah, and then the market looks to come back in to the big scheme Fibonacci. Fine, and then, you know, again, the 38.2 becomes a point of interest, the 50% becomes a point of interest, the 61.8% becomes an interest. So again, you've got short of this red line, so after that, you know, you've got all this distance to stay short. And again, you know, once the market gets down to here, you've seen one, two, three, four, five, six red candles on the 15 minutes. We might take some profit out there. You know, there's nothing wrong with taking profit out. The market recovers. It doesn't get anywhere near your entry point, though, to be honest. And then from that, the only way is down. So does that make sense, guys? I mean, are you starting to... Are you starting to see how you build up the charts and using simple, simple things like Fibonacci and simple things like looking at the higher time frames, looking how it looks then on the smaller time frames, you can start to build up a picture of what's likely to happen. Okay? So, Gem Trader is just asking uh, a couple of questions here, so let me get to them. Uh, hi Mick, how are you doing? Good to see you. Manjo, again, good to see you again. Let me answer these questions. Um, in your experience with bank trades, do they only trade the same techniques as retail traders with more zeros? Ooh, well, that's a really kind of expansive question, Manjo, to be honest. Um, I've only ever been um, a retail trader, okay? So I've managed some huge traders, and I've been a fairly, you know, big trader in my time. The trouble is with anything, Manjo, is that everyone, as I keep saying, is looking for this edge, okay? Everyone's looking for something... 
that doesn't exist, okay? We all have access to the same information. So the art of trading is not knowing what somebody else or everybody else doesn't know. Well, on the rare occasions you get fundamental news, maybe that's the case, but on the majority of times, as long as you know what everyone else is looking at, be it a moving average, Fibonacci, Bollinger Bands, whatever it is, if you know what people are looking at, then they're either getting it right and you trade with them, or they're getting it wrong and you trade against them. So the art of trading is knowing what everybody else knows and using that to your advantage. Okay, does that make sense, Manjo? Okay, sorry, Mick, no, I can't see your question. Uh, did you type that on the chat window or is that somewhere else? Okay, so no, sorry, Mick, if, if you can just type your question or copy and paste it back into, um, do it in the chat window or the Q&A main window. Right, okay, yeah, I can see I can see you saying, oh, yeah, okay, guys. So remember, just keep keep putting them through on the chat window of the QA. I know it's confusing for people. Um, okay, what about news of the week yen, please? Okay, Jim Trader. Well, yeah, I mean, again, you have to remember that people are trying to, uh, countries, and we're, everyone's talking about the currency wars right now. now you know, I was asked, asked to write an article for Bloomberg about these currency wars, and it's, it's very difficult to get excited, to be honest, about the currency wars. And it's <coughs> people, you know, again on Bloomberg, uh, the reason why I don't go on Bloomberg or write that much or appear that much, because it just takes all your information. You know, you can be a stand-up comedian going touring the, the country and, like, playing, um, you know, auditoriums, and you can do that for 10, 15, 20 years. The minute you go on telly or TV, you know, that is completely, you know, drawn out. All that material has gone, it's been seen, it needs something new. And that's what's very difficult um, about appearing so often on things like um, FX Street, is that, you know, if I've written a, a topic on Fibonacci, well, people listen to it once and that's it, it's gone. They, they want something else. So the whole idea of having these trading clinics and using live real-time charting analysis is that it's always changing. So I can, I can log on to the charts at any period, log on to any particular instrument and tell you, in my opinion, what it's doing and why it's done it. Past, past, you know, based on previous charting information. So the fundamentals right now, going back to GemTrader, is that, yeah, Japan is desperately trying to, you know, debase its currency and make it uh, cheaper, but so is everybody else. It's all relative. They've got a massive supply of dollars, which they can't shift, and, you know, they're, they're a producing nation. You know, they're looking to sell their goods. So for me, we're all in a bit of a stalemate, to be honest. Everybody's hanging fire and still really waiting to see what's going to happen with the euro because the dollar has established itself once again as a dominant currency it was never in my doubt it was never not going to be all this nonsense and this fear brought into the market about um, you know the fiscal cliff is absolute nonsense rubbish a joke it's just like last year when uh, there's all these you know the, the problems in, in, the, in the senate are they going to pass the, the debt ceiling revision of course they're going to pass the, uh, the the debt ceiling. There's nothing new. They've done it 30 odd times in, in American history. Of course they're going to do it. What are they going to do? Borrow more money off Japan? Don't make me laugh. This is this is just rubbish. You know, some of the people, these analysts, need to be shot because they're just regurgitating the same old nonsense and, and trying to present it in a way that they think's their own. Okay, these are my opinions. Okay, America's the number one currency. It's going to remain the number one currency. China may be or get to be the biggest economy. Who cares? Okay, China's got five million people, you know, batting around in rice fields, haven't even seen a telephone. What use are these people? What what what's their part of society? Okay, Americans have been established for a long time. You know, they've got the biggest military presence, they've got the biggest uh, consuming economy, and when their economic figures come out into the markets, I trade them and I make money from them. So yes, I'm interested in what China, the tiger in emerging economies, are going to do. I'm a worried by them, not in the slightest. So what's, what's going to happen with Japan? What's going to happen with their currency? Well, just to be honest, you know, hands on heart, I don't really know. But what I do know is I don't really care. Okay, Japan can do whatever it likes. You know, Japan and China, you know, they have these hundred year plans and, you know, they're a very regimented people. Look at past performance. How many times has communism actually worked? Okay, they'll get to a point where it becomes too powerful, it becomes too big, and America will go to war with them. That's what they keep doing. Why should it change? 
You think they're going to get, you know, let Iran get away with a nuclear program and, and start, you know, having nuclear capabilities? Well, yeah, they might let it for the next two, three, four, five years, but if they start appointing missiles at America, they'll invade them. That's, you know, that's just past history. You know, we can't, go, we can't turn our backs on what's happened in the past because we look at the past to predict the future. So all these things like Nostradamus and all, you know, all these guys have made these wild accusations, accusations, some of them came true. That's fine, but we live in a very complicated society nowadays, and we have a lot of access to free information, and there's still a lot of things we don't know. But the fact of the matter is that if anything threatens the Western world and the, our way of life, we generally do something about it. So the fact of the matter is that Japan and the, and the yen are going to continue to weaken as much as Japan wants, but it's really, for me, in market forces right now. I think for the first time, a lot of these Asian markets and the, the, these you know, very clever, regimented thinkers are finding it tough. You know, they've based all their assumptions on continuous growth and people wanting the same things. What they don't take into characteristic, what they don't take into the thought is people are just people. Okay? What isn't changing is people. They're not making a new type of human being. We're still just bald monkeys that want the best car, the best for our families, the nice holidays, and more things. We're designed to want them things. So as more people get, you know, these emerging markets get westernised, they want more things. They want the designer brands, they want the cars, they want all these kind of things. But the trouble is they, they haven't worked to get it. You know, America and the UK and, and Europe have been around for a long time. They've got a rich history, a rich culture. People are used to being rich, aristocratic, then poor, then rich, then poor. Okay, place like Spain is struggling of 25% unemployment because they're a relatively new country. You know, relatively speaking, in their growth, they've only been going for 40, 50 years. I lived in Spain for 10 years, so I've seen it firsthand. They saw nothing but a 10 year of expansive, rapid growth. Now they don't have that. They have nothing to fall back on. So they've got 25% unemployment, and they've got, you know, again, a really struggling, overvalued um, you know, property uh, portfolio, you know, banks that are unstable. And what they haven't got is a solid work ethic. Whereas in America, people will get back and get two jobs. Well, people won't even get one job in Spain. Anyway, okay. So, all right, guys. So that's, that's my little rant about the, uh, the human psyche and the yen. What else do you want to know? Uh, anything else you want to know, guys? What, what, what do you want to focus on now? Well, Ahmed, yeah, interesting. Um, do I think that other nations haven't learned the lessons? Well, maybe they haven't had enough lessons to learn from yet. You know, again, I, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not the oracle. I'm, I've got my opinion just like everybody else has, and the fact that I've got a medium to say it, you know, is it, fairly irrelevant. You know, lessons are learned, lessons are ignored. Um, however, you know... What I keep going back to is that history keeps repeating itself, that people want more, people go boom, go bust, and people recover. But the trouble is, you know, when you, you talk about the boom and bust in the UK, you've got nobody going from, you know, everything to nothing. You know, people just have to take a step back. They can't buy a new TV. They can't go on holiday. They're not going to complete poverty and losing everything they own. Okay, so that's, you know, that's all them kind of things. Okay, but yeah, good question. Thanks for that. So, okay, so other things we'll look at is cable and the uh, Aussie-Canadian. Right, let's do that now, guys. Oh, the Aussie versus the Canadian. Oh, no, no, the US. Do you want the US? The Aussie, yeah. The, yeah, Aussie versus Canadian. Do we have that here? Aussie versus... Yeah, all right, guys. Okay, the Aussie, Aussie versus Canadian. Okay, so let's start on our weekly. So, oh, a lot of noise there. Uh, again, because we're on the highest of time frames, you know, just ignore these lines for the time being. Okay, so we've seen the market peak up at 107.90, move down, can't make a higher high. Now we're just ranging between, I would really say, range between 102.60 on the high time frames and 106.25. Okay, so we're in, in a bit of no man's land at the minute. So let's zoom in and see how that looks. So on the dailies, so on the dailies, what we're looking at is the market is rejecting these highs, to be honest. Okay, we've moved sideways, we've tried to make highs, but again, that's only one candle, which has instantly been um, 
sold off to pretty much 100% of that entire up move. We've seen red candles after that, the market move aggressively lower to 102.60, and the market's then recovered. We're trading against a little bit of um, what we'd call fair value at, at 104.12. So, we've t you know, so again, we've tried to make the highs, couldn't make a higher high, but we've tested that three times. Okay, right, so that's the daily view. What I'm going to say is, let's go to the alleys. What I see happening is, if we don't find that the market tests 104.59 in the Aussie CAD, yeah, if the market doesn't test that and starts to run out of momentum, the market is going to move down. It's going to move down aggressively, and it's going to look to test these levels. It's going to look to test 104.29. It's going to look to test 104.12. And then, eventually, once we get past 104.03, the market doesn't see any significant support until we hit this trend, this sideways trend down here at 103.44. Let's try and put some, put some more meat around this, okay? So how can we do that? Well, let's look at some, look at some sentiment. Okay, so the sentiment is telling me that on the higher time frames, okay, so on the closes, we're seeing a bullish push, okay, but the daily's just turned negative, okay, so that, that's good for what I'm thinking right now. The RSI, so we're not overbought or oversold, we're in the range. The monthly is still saying it's positive on the MACD, however negative on the weekly and daily. Stochastics, monthly and weekly are showing me negative. Okay, so what that tells me is, that the market is trying to make these high highs and move down. Okay, it's finding a little bit of support on that current value, but I'm going to be looking for shorts. So anywhere where the market looks to top, yeah, at 104.68, 104.59, I'll be looking to short with targets at 104.29 and 104.12. So that's your hourly view, remember. So you can bring it your 15 for more precise entry points. But what I would say is that. You know, let's use our own from you know friend Fibonacci again. Pretty much here, here's the start of the green candle, the up move. So we go from here to the highs. Can't make a higher high. So where were we trading? Okay, we're trading just above the 38.2, but we found support on the 50%, which ties in with that other key level, which already drawn in. Look, almost to the pip of 104.29. So the market has hit the 50% retracement. Okay. It, touched the 61.2 and that's going back to this entire up move here okay so the market is rebounded off that 50 percent and moving up so it's either now going to look to test 23.6 which again you know it's not a million miles away from the double top which i said if it closes below the 104.59 downward pressure will come back into the market so that's what you've got to do you've got to be patient guys so look at these hourlies let's go on the 15 just to find a better entry point so look at this that, that's beautiful guys up move. So all we've done is a simple Fibonacci from the start of the up move to you know to the highs of the market. So the market looks to move down, finds loads of support, okay, on this 23.6% level. Can't hit a higher high or touch. You now again we see pretty much four attempts to break higher when the market can't close above that. So then the market then moves down, can't make a high high in the previous high, and then moves down. 23.6, hits 38.2, hits 50%, hits 61.8, pretty much to the pip. Yeah, and there's a little rebound up. Once it's done that, it finds support resistance now on the 50%, moves down. And how many times that touched the 61.8? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times, doesn't look back and it moves up. So what you're looking for, for now for the market to do is to run out of momentum. Okay, we've seen the go. We've seen it retrace to 50%. It didn't really want to close below the 61.8%, since it was got nowhere near that 100%. So you want to wait for it to run out of momentum before you sell it. I'm looking for this Aussie cab to be negative, to be honest. That's my, that's my feeling. We haven't made enough effort after this sustained up move to test these highs. So the market's run out of momentum. So again, it's, it's got back through the lows and back through, closed above the 50%. But look, it's all tiny little candles. Yeah, when you see the downward coming in, we see these big red candles, big red candles, big attempts to push lower. Okay, when we're making the up move, the retracement, it's all little candles. Okay, the solid bodies, but well, they're only little. That tells me the momentum isn't as strong on the up move, it's on the down. So you look for a key point to go short, so the market fails to hit, touch and hit above 
104.59, or indeed the 23.6, you've been technical, a 104.63, then look to get short the market and have defined exit point to the 50%, 61, because once we close but below that 61.8 and that blue line of current value, it's not going to look, it's not going to look back. It's going to definitely hit down 103.65. Okay, so look for rejections at these points here and here. So anywhere from 106.8 to 104.59. If you don't close above that on the hours or reject them highs, the market's going to go lower. It's going to hit this blue line, okay, and then below. Does that make sense? What, what's your view? Who asked me about the? Uh, who asked me about that? Um, so just go back to the chat window. So that was Gem Trader. What's your view then, Gem Trader? Does that tie in with what you're thinking? Okay, do you mean did you get a similar view to me? Are you looking at the market from this point to run out of momentum and go short? Are you expecting a bull move to continue? I mean what, what exactly do you think? Okay, we're just gonna run through the sentiment again. Uh Gem Trader is just asking about that. Okay, well the sentiment is these are high time frames. Okay, so what we're looking at is building up our charts from a, a, a responsible and intelligent view. If you try and trade intraday of a minute chart, you're going to get too much noise. Okay? As I said to you at the beginning of this presentation, unfortunately, you know, you don't have direct market access. Okay, and if you do, you probably, you know, wouldn't be listening to me. If you have direct market access, you are actually involved in creating the bid and the offer. You're a market maker, like I used to be. But now we're just trading off the spread. So we're trading off a represented price and paying a premium to do that. So when you're building up your charts, you need to discount the minute charts, the tick charts, the five minute charts, and concentrate on the higher time frames to eliminate the noise. So you look at the 15 minute chart, because every four 15 minute candles at close, you get an hourly signal. So if you're looking at your hourlies now, the main reason why people get stopped out of trades is they don't let the hourly close. Yep, because again, just like this candle here, we see this big long body go all the way down here, and it closes up here. So people will get out of trades, you know, with, with, without letting the candle close. So if people, for instance, are looking for a bounce of the 50%, yeah, then the market will push all the way down here, yeah, because they know once we break through the 50%, all the longs will get out of the market. So it pushes the market down all the way to 61.8%, okay, so all the longs are out of the market, bang, where does it actually close? Well, it actually closes up here, okay, so if you went long the 50% retracement, you would get into profit, yeah, because the profit would be from here to here. However, yeah, because you didn't let the, the, the hourly candle close, you'd have got out some around here because the market's being pushed. I obviously must be wrong in that trade. So, okay, so the market takes all the way as far as it can and a little bit more, and then all the, all the longs are at the market. The market goes back up and closes above that 50%. So when you're trading higher time frames, you have to let the candles close because if you don't, then you've got, you have all that room to be manipulated and to be pushed out of the market. Okay, uh, again, the sentiments are quite uh, based upon higher time frames. So what we're looking at is the close of the candles on the monthly, weekly, and daily. Okay, so that just says bullish, bullish, negative, or bearish. Then the RSI is a relative strength index, and that's based upon the monthly RSI. It's trading you know, between 70 and 30, so it's mid-range, so no bias. That's the same with the weekly and the daily. The MACD you know, is a well-known other um, oscillator we use. So that's saying on the monthly, the MACD is positive. However, on the weekly daily, it's negative. And so the Castix, again, another chart we can overlay, is um, monthly, weekly negative, daily bullish. So that, all that is, it means that when you look at the, the MACD, the Castix, RSI on your chart, you know, in a normal way, so we're doing now. I mean, we just um, if we're just doing now. That's what the RSI looks like. Okay, so the RSI on your screens looks like this. If you use normal MetaTrader or any charting package, so we know when we're above 70, yeah, that the market is oversold. Yeah, so it's oversold. Sorry, overbought, so the market is likely to go down. So that ties in with my opinion, the market here is going to move lower. Okay, but it doesn't break above 70. Look, we're only just on the cusp, like 68, uh, 8, 9, 2, 5. So my daily um, 
RSI is set above 70, the very extremes of the market. So it's up here. Look, market moves down. If it's here, market moves you know, sideways. You know, the market's here, well above 70, it's moved down. I mean, see how it correlates. Above 70, market moves down. So here, we're high on the RSI, we're high on the chart. There's no way this, this US CAD is staying up, though. It's going to come down based on the RSI. Yeah? Does that, does that make sense? So we're right at the top. So as that RSI comes down, the market will come down. But if you want, guys, so what are we in? We're in the Aussie CAD. I'll back it up. As I always said, guys, I'll back it up with real money. Let, let's get on the Aussie CAD now. Let's go short. The Forex. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie CAD. Maybe I haven't got an intertrader. Forex. Minor. Yep, there we go. Aussie CAD. I'm just going to go in at market. You know, trade fairly small. Sell. So there we go. That's my live intertrader account. Okay, so I'm now short the Aussie CAD. Short the Aussie CAD. As long as we close below 104.59, that's that's you know, on the 23.6. That would be my stop really at 104.68. I'm looking for targets at 50%, then lower. And I'd probably take an overall target over the next. Depends how a lot of hold the trade for. Today especially, I expect the Aussie CAD to be trading at 104.29. Okay, that's, that's my goal right now. All right, guys. Well, we've only got a few minutes left. Is there any other questions that we want to round up? Okay, uh, I've got some ones in the private um, chats. So let me go through them now. Uh, Steve, been training for a long time, uh, but still get confused on which Fibonacci series. What time frame do you prefer? Four hours, one hour, or just take... Uh, as always, 50 to 80 pips. All right, Rakesh, it doesn't really matter what time frame you use Fibonacci. The higher the time frame, okay, the more valid. So if you use a daily Fibonacci retracement, you're going to get more defined entry and exit points than off the hourlies. I would generally say that I use Fibonacci on the hours. The hours give you a good, clean, concise idea of where the markets could move to. So that's, that's what I'd look to trade off the Fibonacci on the hours. But then look for it more as your exit point than entry point. If you've already drawn your Fibonacci, okay, you should know the extremes of the market. So you use the 23, 38, 50, 61.8 for your exit point. Okay, that's how I use it, for exit, not entry. Okay, Mick, Steve, you read somewhere that the sentiment indicates are based only off traders on MT4. Is that correct? Okay, Mick, I don't know. No. You're thinking of the sentiment indicators that MT4 uh, and MT4, my, my friends at MT4i have written. That yes, them sentiments are based upon people's actual trades. My sentiment um, indicator on the top left is based upon the RSI um, that I've defined. So that's just the market telling me what it's doing. It's not based upon other traders. But yes, don't get confused. Sentiment on MT4 and MT4i is what other traders are doing. My sentiment is just... Um, the RSI that you see here, the normal RSI, okay, uh, just put into arrow format, so it's what the market's actually doing, okay? Good to see you, Mick. Again, guys, I'm going to go straight from this over to Intertrader to try uh, trade the, uh, the CPI today, so if you're interested in watching another live trade, please come along. Um, hopefully, you guys are starting to understand the benefits of these, these live trading sessions, guys. Uh, again, I'm trading my own money. I'm giving you live, real-time charting analysis. I'll show you all these things on any time frame that you want, and I'll, I'll disprove that you can't trade off minute trades. You know, I don't mind, guys. And whatever helps you, let me know. So tell your friends, get their attendances up, so we have more questions. You know, in advance, if you know one of my seminars is coming up, write a question. You know, write your view down. I'm not always right, guys. But again, I would back it up with being here every week on FX Street. Every week I'll turn up, I'll give you my opinions, I'll show you my charts, I'll show you my analysis, and we'll trade together, and we should all make money. Okay, you know, I'm, I'm up nearly £10,000 in live trades. You know, I'm not trying to say I know best, it's not about that. It's just trying to pick the opportunities and, and, and trade based upon what the charts and data are telling us. All right, guys, well, that's pretty much nearly my, uh, my allotted time today. I don't want to run over because I'm going straight across to Intertrader to, um, to trade the CPI figure at 1.30. So anything else, guys, you know, send anything through to my email address. You know, you can contact me through um, FX Street. Um, 
And anything else, guys, that you want to know for, for next week's um, trading clinic, you know, again, do a little bit of homework, you know, find out, you know, ask some questions like Gem Trader and, and you know, our other attendees today and, and try and, you know, try and test it. But, you know, again, I speak to a lot of traders, I speak to a lot of hedge fund managers, you know, we've been involved in that industry for years, so I've got a, a rare insight to this stuff, so bounce some questions, guys, you, know, you can either agree with me or disagree with me, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm big enough and ugly enough to know that I'm not always going to get it right, but I'll, I'll take my chances because I've done very well at the markets over the last decade. Alright guys, well, thanks for attending, again, please spread the good word, let's get our attendance as high as we can. Um, thanks to Maud, Vicky and the guys at FX Street and I'll see you all next week. Alright guys, have a great afternoon and uh, I'll see you soon.